had unexpected pregnancy with my AP. My husband found and decided to take cruel revenge. Hey, fellow Redditors. I am Amber, 32, married to Michael, 29. And I wanted to share how my carelessness ruined my perfect marriage with the guy who respected me the most. This post is mostly about self-awareness. So if there is anyone who wants to trash talk me about being a bad wife or how I could have done something like this, then please, this is not for you. I am here to reflect on my mistakes and hopefully provide some insight for others who may be struggling in their own relationships. I had always been an ambitious person since I was a kid. It had always been my dream to work for TVG, which was the biggest and oldest name in the industry. I worked hard on my grades to make sure my GPA was impeccable and aced the placement interviews to make sure that I landed my dream job. All the hard work paid off when I got into TVG, my dream company. I made a promise to myself that I will become a manager within the next two years. I knew that achieving this goal would require dedication, perseverance, and continuous learning. With each passing day at TVG, I immersed myself in the work, seeking opportunities to take on new responsibilities and showcase my skills. As I progressed in my career, I remained focused on my goal of becoming a manager in two years, constantly seeking feedback and mentorship to further develop my leadership abilities. I met Michael through my family. He had recently moved to our neighborhood and went to the same church. My parents couldn't stop talking about him since the one time he helped them with their car. I wasn't very interested in meeting him, but just to get my parents off my back, I decided to meet him once and get it done with. He was handsome and charming. He made me laugh, and it did not feel forced to spend time with him. We didn't date much, one due to my hectic schedule, and two, he believed that dating a lot ruins the excitement in a relationship. So we got married just four months after knowing each other. I know this might be shocking for many people, but frankly, marriage was not a part of my plan and not my priority. I made myself very clear to Michael about my goals and ambitions in life. He was very happy and proud of me for everything I had achieved so far and everything I would be achieving in the future. I felt that it was not too bad to be married after all. We both agreed that our marriage would not hinder our individual growth and personal development. We made a conscious effort to support each other's dreams and aspirations, ensuring that we continued to pursue our goals while being happily married. This mutual understanding and respect for each other's ambitions made our decision to get married feel even more right. Michael was into construction, which required him to have flexible work hours and also travel to different locations. This was perfect for me as I did not have to worry about being a dutiful wife and make time for Michael. My marriage gave me the freedom I wanted, so I guess it wasn't that bad. It felt more like having a flatmate as Michael would come and go depending on his schedule. I was aiming for a promotion, so I was making sure I did everything to get it. Richard was one of my teammates who would help and motivate me when things went south. I was happy to have at least one person rooting for me. He understood my difficulties and frustrations. I could talk to him about what and how I felt and he would get it. The equation I had with Richard was very different from that of Michael. I had to prepare a presentation for my final interview, so I asked Richard if he could help me with it. We obviously couldn't do it in the office, so I asked him to come home if he had no problem. We went home and were working on the presentation, which took longer than we expected. His wife called him to ask when he would be home, and I spoke to her and apologized for keeping her husband away for so long. I promised her that he will be home soon. We ordered pizza, and we were just reviewing the presentation one last time to make sure everything was right when he dropped the pizza on his pants. Out of habit, I took a napkin and started wiping without realizing it. He held my hand and kissed me. Before I could react, he pulled me closer and started kissing me. With Michael away for too long, I was missing affection, so I started kissing him back. I think the rubbing aroused him, and that is what made him act this way. We made out for 10 minutes and then looked at each other. He told me that he had to go or else his wife would kill him. I let him go, but kept going back to those 10 minutes again and again in my head. The next day I went to work, but things were awkward between me and Richard. We tried so hard to act normal, but it wasn't easy. We both met at the emergency exit to discuss what to do, but we ended up making out again. After that day, Every time we would be alone, 
we would end up talking less and doing more. It was like an addiction. We couldn't help ourselves being pulled towards each other. We both were married and knew that it was wrong. But as much as we tried to stay away from each other, it was getting more and more difficult as we had to keep working and spending time with each other. We soon gave up the idea of trying to maintain distance and go with the flow. Nobody was being forced into doing anything that we did not agree upon. We both knew that when it would come to choose between marriage and affair, we would always choose our respective spouses instead of this affair. We were never vocal about it, but it was understood that we valued our marriage more than the affair. I had finally been promoted to a team manager. I was very happy and thrilled about it because I had worked very hard and deserved this position. I made sure that my best coworker, Richard, would be a part of the team I would be handling. I couldn't let anyone else have Richard, if you know what I mean. Being a team lead was a different ball game altogether. It was stressful, tiring, with never-ending complaints about something or the other, and pushing people to complete their work before their deadlines. It made me lose my temper more than I would have liked to. Thank God I had Richard to help me cope with all the stress and chaos I was going through. Not many people were happy with my promotion and secretly prayed for me to fail at handling a team. I was determined to prove all of them wrong and throw it in their face by showing them what I was capable of. Michael was working on a new project for which he had to travel and stay in Detroit for the construction of a new hotel. It was a huge project which would open many avenues for him. He was a little hesitant, but I told him that he should take it up without thinking too much about it. Yes, I was genuinely happy for Michael, but I also knew that Michael being away was an opportunity for me to spend more time with Richard. As soon as Michael left, I called Richard and asked him to meet me at home to discuss a few things about the project we were working on. Of course, we couldn't let his wife doubt that something fishy was going on. His wife did not like me much as I made him work a lot. Little did she know what kind of work we did. I never cared if she liked me or not as I was only interested in her husband. I was working on a new project and also banging Richard. I lost track of time and after two months, I realized that I haven't got my period in a while. I quickly bought a pregnancy kit and tested. It turned out to be positive. I could not believe my eyes. How could I have been so careless? My mind raced with thoughts of how this could impact my life and the lives of those around me. I knew I had to make some difficult decisions and face the consequences of my actions. It was time to have a serious conversation with Richard and figure out what our next steps would be. I asked Richard to meet me at our usual cafe to discuss something important. I did not want to disclose this news over the call. I met him and broke the news to me. He immediately denied and told that the baby couldn't be his. It could be mean in Mickles and how could I be so sure that it was his? I laughed at his refusal and told him that Michael had been away for more than a month and I missed my period for two months. There was a 100% chance that the baby was his and not Michael's. He said that it would not be possible as we were very careful. He asked me if I missed having my contraceptives, which I did more than a few times. He said that me not having the pills was not his fault. He took every precaution necessary to not get me pregnant so I couldn't blame him for it. He said that he had a wife, and if she got to know about it, then he would be ruined. I couldn't believe the way he was pushing the blame on me when he was equally responsible for the mess we were in. I told him not to worry as I myself did not want any more problems, so I would anyway abort the baby. I went home and booked myself an appointment for the next week with a gynecologist. I was so tired with all the running around and the mental stress that I fell asleep. I woke up the next day and saw Michael beside me. I smiled at him and went back to sleep. I got up late as it was a Saturday. I just wanted to rest at home and do nothing. I saw that Michael was already up and preparing lunch for us. I went to the washroom to freshen up and noticed that the bin was not emptied last night. I was throwing away the tissues when I noticed the pregnancy kit in the bin showing two red lines very clearly. I knew that I had to hide it before Michael saw it. I wasn't sure if he already noticed it, but thought of taking my chances. He might not have seen it, otherwise he would have woken me up and asked me about it. I, I got ready and went to the kitchen where Michael was almost done cooking. He smiled at me, which made me relax a little. He might not have noticed or realized what it was. We both sat and started eating. Michael was definitely a better cook than me. Michael asked me if there was something that I wanted to share, so I started telling him about my new project. 
and how stressful it has been so far. He just smiled and reacted to everything I was saying. After lunch, we went to our room, and Michael told me that he had something interesting to show me. He asked me to close my eyes and wait. By this time, I was damn sure that he thought there was nothing wrong with our marriage. I went ahead and closed my eyes in anticipation of a surprise gift. He asked me to extend my hand with my eyes closed and put something in it. I knew it was high time he gifted me something. I opened my eyes and saw the used pregnancy kit in my palm. I looked at him in shock and he folded his hands and asked me if I liked his surprise, which was more of a shock for him. Michael had found the pregnancy kit in the dustbin and acted so innocent for the past one hour. He was already aware that he had been away for a project for more than a month, so there was no way the baby was his. He confronted me about it and initially I was very adamant that it was his. He would come home over weekends, so that explains it. He said that he was very sure that we would never have sex for at least three months. There was always something or the other going on. He kept asking me to come clean about it. I argued with him that he was a very untrustworthy husband. Why could he not believe me and be happy that we were going to be parents? Michael reminded me that he had had a vasectomy due to some complications, so there was no way he could make me or anyone pregnant for that matter. This was a very crucial piece of information that slipped out of my mind at the wrong moment. Of course, he couldn't have kids, and that was one of the main reasons I married him. I knew that he would never pester me to have kids so I could completely focus on my career. He immediately knew that I was sleeping around with someone else during the time he wasn't in the city. After a series of back and forth, I couldn't lie anymore and slipped that it was Richard's. All hell broke loose after that. Michael's face turned red with anger as he demanded an explanation for my betrayal. I couldn't deny the truth any longer and tearfully admitted that Richard was the father of the baby. Michael asked me to explain to him in detail how it all started and why I hid it from him. He told me that he would have easily divorced me if he knew that I wasn't happy with him. But the truth was that I was having no issues in being married to Michael. I was in fact very happy with Michael as I could do anything that I wanted and it did not even feel like I was married. I never thought about it before, but Michael did give me the freedom and space to do things my way. I wasn't even sure why I was having an affair with Richard. Maybe it was just my body wanting a new touch. I told Michael that I was sorry and I wasn't even sure why I decided to have an affair when I had no issues with him. Maybe I liked Richard as a co-worker, which led to me having an affair with him, imagining what it would be like to get intimate with him. My confession made Michael even more angry that I had no valid reason to have an affair. I could see Michael feeling helpless about the situation. He asked me to stop talking and that he had heard enough. He just left me in the room, took his bag, and left. I didn't even try to stop him as I myself was confused about the reason for my affair. I knew that it would be best to take some time away from each other so that we could both process what was going on and then come to a conclusion. The next day at work, I received a big bouquet with a big card on it congratulating me on being pregnant. It was anonymous, but I knew that there was only one person who could do that. After about 30 minutes, a big cack was delivered with a note that read, congratulations on being a faither to Richard. The expression on both mean and Richard's face was enough, and it wasn't difficult for people to add two and two together. The news spread so rapidly that Richard and I were having a baby after our affair. I was called in by my boss and asked about it. He told me that he would have to report me to the work ethics committee to make sure that the rumors were false. I was very confident that Richard would have my back, so I told him that all of these were false rumors and someone was trying very hard to defame me. A few days later, Richard was called in by the ethics committee. He was there for almost four hours. We were instructed not to contact each other till the case was closed. I waited patiently for any news with regards to my case with the committee. Richard smiled at me when he saw me as an assurance that he had done his part so I was relieved that at least I would not be losing my job, which was the most important thing in the world to me. I could breathe easily now that all the allegations against me would be cleared very soon. I worked as usual until two days later, I was asked to go on a leave of absence till a conclusion could be reached in my case. I wondered what it was all about, but it was protocol, so I decided to comply with it. I did not even think once about any issues that I would have as Richard would not desert me in the middle of a crisis. Guess I was wrong about it. 
Richard very cleverly blamed me for workplace sexual abuse. He said that I took advantage of my position and blackmailed him to provide me with sexual favors. I was on the verge of losing my job and getting blacklisted from the entire industry. If I couldn't gather proof, then my professional life would be over. I was so tense about it when I got to know that Richard had done an unexplainable thing. I was packing my bags as Michael wanted me to leave the house, and I myself was feeling too ashamed to live in the same house as him. I was almost done with taking most of the stuff that belonged to me when I saw my phone completely soaked in water. Michael accidentally dropped my phone in the water. I asked Michael what he had done to my phone, but he kept saying that it was a mistake and he did not realize it till it was too late. I did not buy it, but there was nothing else I could say or do. Now I knew that I couldn't retrieve any of the messages exchanged between me and Richard. We just exchanged messages and there were never any pictures. So I had no proof that it was all consensual. I was almost in tears thinking about all the hard work I had put in to get till here to become a manager. It would all be gone just like that. The investigation was completed and I was found guilty of harassing and asking for sexual favors. I appealed to the human resources team, but they denied it stating that they had a strong testimony that I harassed and overworked people. I told them that there might have been a misunderstanding and if I could talk to the person, maybe the outcome would be different. They weren't on board with it, but as I had been a very good employee, they gave me an exception. I was asked to come in after two days and put my case again with the witness that they would be bringing in. I came all prepared with how it started and Richard was the one who kissed me first. I went in with confidence and the witness called in was some random woman who did not even work here. It gave me high hopes to counter her and drop the sexual assault charges against me. She was introduced as Richard's wife. I felt the earth crumble beneath my feet. How could I counter the wife of the man I was sleeping with? Nevertheless, it was not the time to give up now. She played a few recordings where I confirmed that Richard was with me in my house and helping me with work. I could not deny them as all of it was true. I did talk to her a few times and she was unhappy about him working even after normal office hours. She had the proof and I didn't. I defended myself by telling them that Richard was the one who started the affair. His wife defended him by telling that he would come home upset and always complained that I had forced myself on him again. It was my word against the husband and wife who were trying very hard to make sure I take the fall for the entire affair. As a result, I lost my job and was blacklisted from the industry. Update, I was depleting my finances at a very fast pace. Very soon I would be left with no savings. I knew that this was coming so I had been staying in a motel for the past one month to save money. The divorce case took up a huge chunk of my savings which left me no option but to be on a budget. I knew that going to court would be useless as Michael could easily prove that I had an affair and get away with owning everything that we owned together. I wanted to mutually agree for a divorce, but Michael insisted on going to court. I knew that there would be no lawyer who would take up my case as everything was against me. Plus, I had no money to afford a decent lawyer. I knew that Michael wanted me to suffer, and that was the only reason he wanted to take this divorce to the court. Even though I begged and pleaded with him to settle for a divorce by mutual agreement outside of court, I promised him that I would be demanding no alimony and he was free to claim anything he wanted from me, but he denied and said he needed a fair trial to find closure. I'm not sure how true it was, but things were definitely not going the way I wished. I aborted the baby as I wasn't sure how I would be able to bring it up without a job or a man in my life. It was not an easy decision thanks to Michael who sent my pregnancy test results to my family with a big balloon which read, congratulations on becoming grandparents, to embarrass me in front of my family. My parents were staunch Catholics and took adultery as no less than a crime. They stopped picking up my calls and cut me off. After I became a manager, I had very few friends at work that immediately cut ties with me. I basically had no one I could talk to or no one to support me in these difficult times. I'm feeling lonely and have no one I can confide in. My parents have practically disowned me and are even willing to take Michael's side. They have announced that I am a person without faith. They do not want anything to do with me because I have brought shame to their name and reputation. They are the same parents who were very proud of me as I was the first woman in our family to become a manager in a big corporation. Like they say, when your time is bad, even your shadow leaves your side. 
and this is exactly what I have been feeling for a couple of days. There is no one who would want to listen to me or sympathize with me. Everywhere I go, I see people looking at me making up stories about me being an unfaithful wife and taking advantage of my naive husband. Sometimes I feel like getting on top of a building and screaming that I'm not a bad person. I just didn't expect things to go this way. The next court hearing was something I was not looking forward to. I was shocked to see Richard being so eager to testify against me in court and mention that I forced him to be intimate with me if he wanted to get ahead in his career. I wondered if this was the same man who kept motivating me and appearing to work harder to get a promotion. I was shocked at his shamelessness, at making himself look like a victim, and not missing any chance of making me look like a monster. Needless to say, I lost the case. Now I am stuck in a shitty motel with no job, no parents, no husband, and basically no one to talk to. I have decided to be a lone warrior and fight my battles alone going forward. I am not writing this post to garner sympathy for myself. This is just something that makes me calm and relaxed. I agree that I committed a sin so I would appreciate it if no one judges me for what I have done. This is my coping mechanism of putting my thoughts out there, which has helped me get through tough times. Sharing my thoughts and experiences has been therapeutic for me, allowing me to process my emotions and find solace in expressing myself. It's important to have an outlet during challenging periods, and this has been mine. I hope that by sharing my story, others may find comfort or relate to their own struggles. Thank you all for joining me in this tough journey of finding myself. I hope all of you learn from me and do not repeat the mistakes that I made. If I could turn back the hands of time, I would. I'm currently in a state of chaos. My whole world is crumbling before me. For the first time in my life, I regret listening to my dad. I regret ever knowing him. Even more, I regret that he is my father. Hey, don't judge me. I love my dad so much, but he has ruined my life. Taking my dad's advice to cheat on my husband has made my life a living hell. I have done something that I'm not proud of and will regret for the rest of my life. What should I do, guys? I'm so scared right now. I don't know how my husband will react when he finds out I cheated on him. And it was my dad that gave me the ridiculous advice. My name is Kathy, and I'm a 24-year-old teacher, and I live in a small town called Burford, which is located on the River Windrush in the Cotswolds, England. I'm married to my best friend. His name is Josh. Josh is a pilot. Josh and I have been married for two years now. I always describe Josh as my soulmate, my best friend, and everything. The more I think about it, the more I hate myself for what I have done. Josh and I have been together six years now, and we got married two years ago. Josh and I met when I was 18 years old, and ever since then, my life has been like a fairy tale until I cheated on Josh with our housekeeper, Charles. My dad advised me to cheat on Josh because before Josh and I got married, he clearly stated that he is not ready to be a father. He told me without mincing any words that he doesn't want children. I was taken aback a little, but I love Josh so much, and I thought I could change his mind after marriage, and that our love can conquer all. But I was wrong. Josh remained adamant about not wanting children. He went as far as having a vasectomy when he saw how desperate I became. My dad advised me to cheat on Josh with someone else, so I could get pregnant. My dad knows how much I love children. It was my love for children that made me become a teacher in the first place. I love teaching. Teaching is my passion. I love spending time with children. That's why my dad advised me to cheat on Josh and get pregnant to test Josh's love for me. It will just be a one-time thing, he said. According to my dad, if Josh truly loved me as he claims, he would forgive me for cheating on him and accept me in the pregnancy. I listened to my dad, guys. I cheated on Josh with our housekeeper, Charles. Please don't judge me. I was desperate. I'm disgusted by my actions. It's been three months now and I'm not pregnant. I think I have ruined my once happy and perfect life. Josh doesn't know what happened yet. I've managed to keep it a secret from him for the past three months. I know I'm shameless and selfish for doing that, but I really do not have an explanation. My survival instinct and desire to keep my marriage just kicked in, and I desired to keep my mouth shut and keep everything from Josh. I know telling Josh I cheated on him to get pregnant and to test his love for me could end our marriage. Josh is a good man. 
he doesn't deserve this betrayal from me. He always told me that if at any point in our marriage I wanted to leave and go, start another family, that I should not hesitate, but I can't imagine my life without Josh. My life without Josh has no meaning. I couldn't bring myself to leave Josh even though I wanted children. I don't know what to do now. Should I confess to Josh or I should continue pretending like nothing has happened? Update. Hi guys, it's me again. I decided to keep this secret with me forever, but Charles, my housekeeper whom I slept with, is blackmailing me. He is demanding a huge sum of money from me, or else he will expose our one-time affair to Josh. I'm confused right now. It turned out he has pictures and videos of everything that happened on that fateful day. What was I thinking? Why did I listen to my dad? The same man who could not stay faithful to my mom. The same man who has been married and divorced for three consecutive times. I mean, I love my dad so much he is a good father but was never a good husband to my mom or any of his other wives. It was his fatherly love for me that made him advise me to cheat on Josh and get pregnant so I can test whether Josh truly loves me. But things didn't go as planned and now I'm stuck with the consequences of my actions. I can't believe I used my own hands to ruin my life. Josh is beginning to suspect me. He has been asking what's wrong with me. According to him, I'm no longer the bubbly Kathy he fell for and got married to, and that I have become a shadow of myself. He said something is wrong somewhere, but he can't place it yet. Josh has been trying to put a smile on my face, which is making me feel more guilty. He suggested we go on vacation after school closes for the session. He has been getting me expensive gifts just to cheer me up. One thing about Josh is, he can go to any length just to see me happy. There's nothing Josh will not do except having kids, of course. He never told me why he doesn't want kids, but whatever the reason is, I don't care at this point because I know I messed up. On one hand, I'll hate myself for cheating on Josh with Charles. On the other side is Charles blackmailing me and asking me for a huge amount of money I don't have. Where will I get the money from now? I'm just a preschool teacher. I can't afford the amount of money he is asking me to pay. What should I do? Should I ask Josh for the money and pay Charles, or should I confess everything to Josh? Update. Hey guys. I'm back again. I paid Charles off. I asked Josh to give me the money and he was surprised because I have never made that kind of outrageous demand before. He asked me what I needed the money for and lied to him that my dad is down with kidney failure and needs a kidney transplant urgently. Josh gave me the money immediately and said he will make out time to see my dad soon. He's a pilot and has to be ready for his flights, so he has no time on his hands. I hope that he never has a chance to meet my dad yet because if that happens and Josh ever finds out I cheated on him with Charles and that I lied about my dad having a kidney transplant, that will be the end of my beautiful marriage. I'm forever dreading that day. Hopefully Charles is gone. I paid Charles the money he requested and I asked him to resign from his job as our housekeeper and he should also destroy the pictures and videos. He has resigned, but he refused to destroy the pictures and videos. There was nothing I could do, so I let it go. I was just happy because he was out of my sight. I really hope he is gone for good because the more I see him, the more guilty I feel. My life had been back to normal since Charles got out of my life. Don't get me wrong, I still felt guilty from time to time, but I was finding peace with myself again. So I thought until Josh asked for us to go pay my dad a visit. What was I thinking? Nothing can be hidden forever. Definitely not a lie. What should I do now? Josh is asking, we go see dad after I told him the surgery is successful and he is recovering well at home. I'm lost right now. How should I handle this? Josh will find out the truth when we go to my dad's house and he finds out my dad was never sick and didn't have a kidney transplant. I'm on the verge of breaking down right now. I can't breathe well. I don't know what to do right now. My dad has ruined my life. I wish he truly has kidney failure. Well, not really. Taking my dad's advice has ruined everything for me. I can't even recognize myself again. I'm desperate right now. Yes, I'm desperate to save my marriage. I'm losing my mind right now. Should I confess everything to Josh? Not that I have a choice, right? Update. Hey guys, it's me again. I didn't confess, at least not yet. I called my dad and told everything that had happened. 
I asked him to fix the mess. Yes, he caused everything. I blame my dad for everything, but I can't deny I also played a part. I wish I didn't listen to him, but it's too late to apportion blame now, and I have gone too far in lying to turn back. My dad called Josh and thanked him for the money. He asked him not to visit now, as he is not allowed to receive visitors for now, because according to the doctors, his immune system is low, which makes him more vulnerable to diseases and might make his recovery hard. Once again, I escaped being caught, and my dad's little lie has saved me. I told you all he is a good father to some extent, but I'm not dumb, and I know that all this is just temporary. Josh is smart, and it's only a matter of time before he finds out the truth. Everything seemed to be fine, but it was just temporary. I almost forgot to tell you all that Charles showed up in my house again, this time, with ridiculous demands. Charles is asking for more money. Apparently, he gambled away all the money I gave him, and he is back for more, just like people like him do. He is also asking for to transfer the ownership of our house to him, or else he will expose everything to Josh. This demand is ridiculous, but I don't have a choice. I'm desperate. I want to save my marriage. I asked him to give me time to think about everything, but he refused. He vowed to take everything from me. He turned me into a housekeeper in my own house, and he pretends to visit us just to remind me of what I owe him. He asks me to serve him food when Josh is not around, and sometimes he makes me do his laundry secretly. All these are outrageous, but a lie once told always has to be covered with more lies. Until I'm ready to tell the truth, I can't do anything. Charles knows that, and that's why he's threatening me. I was living in fear in my own house because I was afraid of what Charles would do next. Some weeks later, Josh returned back from his trip and met Charles in our home. He was displeased to see Charles because we had already hired another housekeeper after Charles resigned without giving him any notice. He demanded to know why Charles was in our house again because his visits became frequent, but Charles was unnecessarily rude to him. Josh called me into our bedroom and asked why I allowed Charles into our home. I had to make up something before I got caught. I told him Charles was stranded and that I'm just squatting him and that he will be gone in a day or two. Josh reluctantly allowed Charles to stay but gave two days to leave. Guys, you already know what that meant, right? It meant I had two days to settle Charles or else he would expose me. I decided to give Charles what he wanted, yes. I decided to steal Josh's money and also decided to meet with my attorney and transfer the house to Charles, he promised. After that, he will delete the pictures and videos and I will finally be free. Josh will never get to know about my affair with Charles and the lies I have told so far. I sound stupid. And I know what I want to do is risky, but I never want to lose my husband. I'm desperate. What have I done to myself? Update. I got caught, guys, yes. You read that right. Josh finally caught me. I have been exposed. My karma came early. The lies I have been trying to hide have been exposed. I didn't know Josh installed a CCTV camera in our home. He has been monitoring me ever since I requested that huge money for my dad's allegedly kidney transplant. He listened to my conversations, and he knows about my affairs with Charles. He told me he was waiting for the right time to confront me, and no better time than now that I'm trying to transfer our house to Charles. The day I wanted to steal the money and house documents, Josh had gone for a trip. I thought it was the perfect time to take the documents and some money. I didn't know Josh had taken every valuable thing from the safe. I saw an empty safe. I was shocked. I didn't know what had happened. At first I suspected Charles, but if it was Charles, he wouldn't still be there. I summoned some courage and called Josh. I called Josh and told him our house had been robbed. He was calm, which was even more alarming. It was then he told me, he took everything from the safe and that he was aware of everything I have done. I was perplexed. He said he was only waiting to see how far I was ready to go, and surprisingly, I went very far. He asked me to leave his house before he got back from the trip. He ended the call immediately. I tried calling back, but he blocked me and I wasn't able to reach him. So after the call, it felt like my whole life had crumbled. The first thing I did was to get Charles out of my house of course, he threatened to expose everything to Josh, and I told him I didn't care. He refused to go, and he even wanted to go physical with me. But our new housekeeper came just in time to save me. I called security, and they threw Charles out of the house. Josh arrived two days later, and he was angry I was still in the house. He was furious. I have never seen him that angry. 
I tried to explain everything to him, but he refused to listen. All efforts to make him listen to me proved abortive. He despised me and I could tell from looking at his eyes. He said it was over and that I should leave his house. I tried begging him, but he was adamant about me leaving. One toxic thing about Josh is that he never changes his mind once his mind has been made up. Josh threw my boxes outside and instructed the security never to allow me into the house ever again. He asked me to return the money he gave me for my dad's alleged kidney transplant. He took everything he ever bought for me. He did not allow me to take anything except my boxes. He took the keys of the car he bought for me, the jewelry and everything he ever provided for me without any remorse. Josh asked me to sign the divorce papers before leaving, but I refused because deep down I thought he still loved me and we could still work on our marriage. Of course, I knew he was angry, but I thought time would heal everything and he would forgive me for cheating on him. I thought he loved me so much that he would never let me go. As a matter of fact, I used to believe I was his weakness, his best friend and soulmate. I used to think that no matter what, he would always come back to me and we can work on our marriage. I'm not perfect, neither is Josh perfect. We are two imperfect souls. But now I don't think that's possible because Josh has ignored my whole existence. Update. Hey guys, it's me. I'm back again. What I feared the most has happened. I'm divorced now. Yes, I'm single. This is not how I pictured my life. I never knew I ever got divorced because I married an incredible man that loved me so much, but unfortunately, I jeopardized everything. When Josh and I got married two years ago, I vowed to never get divorced. I always hated divorce because of the stigma that comes with it. My dad has been married and divorced three times in a row, and I have seen how society stigmatized him. I never knew I would one day follow in his footsteps. After Josh sent me away that day, I left for my dad's place. He was surprised when he saw me because he wasn't expecting me. When I narrated everything to him, he opened his arms wide and hugged me. I pushed him away and blamed him for everything. I told him things I regretted later because even though he advised me to cheat on my husband, he never put a gun to my head to do it. I told him horrible things, how he had been married and divorced three times, how he is a failure, how never loved anybody but himself. And my dad listened to everything I had to say and never said a word. Later when I was calmer, he called me. I thought he wanted to scold me for cursing him, but instead he apologized. He admitted to being wrong. That is the first time I'm my dad accepting his wrongs. My dad is an egoistic man. He never accepts he is wrong. Even though his three marriages ended in divorce, he didn't fault himself. Instead, he blamed the women for being after his money. He told me he is sorry for ruining my life and that he thought I would get pregnant after the affair and have my own child because he knows how much I love children. That was why I chose teaching as a profession. He promised he will go see Josh the next day. I was anxious about how the meeting would go, but I still allowed my dad to go see Josh. Maybe when Josh hears the truth from my dad, he will have a change of mind and forgive me. I mean, I know it was selfish of me to sleep with our housekeeper because I wanted to have a child, but I still had hope he might forgive me when he hears the truth that it was my dad's idea. Josh respects my dad so much, he will listen to him and forgive me and everything will be back to how it used to be. So I thought, but I was wrong. That day I waited for my dad to return from Josh's place, but he never came back. I tried calling his line several times, but there was no response. I was devastated and worried. My mind was all over the place. I decided to visit Josh the next day to find out about where my dad was, but I was denied entrance into the house by the security at the gate. I tried calling Josh, but he blocked my line so I could not reach him. I decided to go to the police station and complain about my dad's disappearance. Nothing prepared me for the shock I experienced when I saw my dad at the police station. Apparently Josh arrested my dad when he came to apologize. Things got heated between them, and he arrested my dad. When I asked the policeman for the proof, I discovered that Josh accused my dad of extorting money from him through me by pretending to be down with a kidney failure. My dad was arrested on the count of fraud. Josh gave me two conditions before he will bail my dad. I finally saw him after I made a scene outside the gate. He asked the security to let me in. When I came in, I saw another woman in my matrimonial home wearing my nightie, 
I could not believe my eyes. How Josh moved on so soon, I thought we were soulmates. I thought we were destined to be together forever. I was so disappointed I couldn't even cry. The lady gave me a distraught look and said in her exact words, why are you here? I ignored her and made my way upstairs, but she blocked me. She told me to wait downstairs that Josh will soon be down. I couldn't believe there was a stranger in my house wearing my nightie and asking me not to go see my husband in our bedroom. While I was trying to process everything, Josh came downstairs and he was even more furious than he was before when he sent me packing. He asked to leave. I begged him to please release my dad from the police station and he gave two conditions, one that I will refund double of the money he gave me for my dad's alleged kidney transplant and two that I will sign the divorce papers. I tried begging him but he refused to listen and threatened to throw me out if I'm not ready to accept his conditions. When I saw his mind was made up, I stopped begging and accepted my fate. At that moment, I was ready to sign the divorce papers. My poor father was suffering in the police station, and I will go to any length to see him released. Nothing matters to me again than my dad's freedom. I have lost my marriage, my best friend, and my soulmate. I cannot lose my dad too. I accepted his conditions, I signed the divorce papers, and he gave me 24 hours to raise the money. My whole world was crumbling just as I had feared. I could not believe what was happening to me. I sold my dad's house so I could meet up with Josh's deadline. That was the only inheritance my dad left for me. I had to sell it to raise money. I also sold all the furniture we had in the house. I gave the money to Josh and my dad was released. Update. Hi guys, I'm back again. After dad was released, we became homeless. There was no house to come back to because I had sold everything. Thankfully, he moved in with his brother while I went to squat with my friend. You would think after the divorce, Josh will finally allow me to be, but you guessed wrong. He has decided to. Continue frustrating my life. He made sure I was sacked from the school I taught at. He knows I love teaching and he is trying to take everything I love from me. Like I said, Josh is a pilot, so he has the finances and connections to do whatever he likes. Even though I worked, I solely depended on his money. I was sacked and life became more miserable. I couldn't even afford a sanitary pad. I can still feed thanks to my childhood friend, Monica. She offered me food and shelter while I continued job hunting. Josh made the principal in my former school spread lies about me that I'm unprofessional with children. So it was hard for me to secure a job. Josh vowed to make my life a living hell and he succeeded. The more I applied for jobs, the more rejection later I got. I never imagined that something like that was possible, but I'm a testimony. I was devastated. Worst of all, my dad was sick and I couldn't afford to buy drugs for him. I was dead broke. My poor dad never recovered from being locked up by the very man he took like a son he never had. My dad was fond of Josh. They played golf together whenever my dad visited and Josh would let him win all the time. They were so fond of each other. Everything happened so fast, now all that is left is regret. My dad has been down ever since everything happened, whether it's the guilt of destroying his only child marriage, or the fact that he lost his house, or being locked up by the person he once loved like a son. He blames himself, and I see the guilt in his eyes every day. Even though Josh and I are divorced, I have always fantasized about getting back together. I never lost hope. You can imagine my happiness when I got a message from Josh to come to the house that he had a surprise for me. I was happy. I thought finally he forgave me and he was ready for us to start over again. This time, ready to spend forever with him, I'm ready to let go of my thoughts of having my own children. I was so excited I dashed out barefooted, but I had to run back. I pinched myself to make sure I wasn't dreaming. I never knew this day would ever come. My dream of reuniting with Josh, my ex-husband, was cut short again. I never knew he wanted to give me a lifetime humiliation. I arrived at Josh's place and it was like a carnival. Everybody was present. I was happy. I thought he was about to ask me to marry him again like he did the first time. So I thought, silly me, I never knew what was awaiting me. When I got to the living room, all eyes were on me. I wanted to disappear. Everyone gave me a disdainful look. It felt like a witch had just walked in. I felt unwanted. No one answered my greetings. Everybody avoided me. I wanted to leave when I saw Monica. 
my best friend, who I have been staying with ever since the divorce. I felt relaxed again. I thought Josh had contacted Monica so they could organize a surprise party for me. How delusional. I called Monica and she avoided me like everyone else. I thought they didn't want to give the surprise away. That is why everyone is avoiding me, but I was wrong. While I was putting everything together, I saw Josh's mom and I went to say hi to her, but she also ignored me. I'm not surprised by actions because she never ignored me. She never wanted Josh to marry me because to her I was a gold digger. She even went as far as trying to buy me off so I could leave her son. But I rejected the money. I kept this away from Josh because I didn't want to cause a rift between them. I know how much Josh adorned his mother. Josh came downstairs after some time, but I was surprised he also avoided me. I thought he had called me for something else. It was then that I finally began to realize that I had been brought to face my own humiliation. But I just sat there like a fool. He went straight to the front, took the microphone from the music band and went one knee, but nobody prepared me for what came next. I was expecting Josh to walk towards me and tell me he forgave me, but I was wrong. He walked up to Monica, my best friend, and I was shocked. I didn't know what was happening. I was even more shocked when Monica held hands with him. Josh went on to tell everyone how I cheated on him with our housekeeper, Charles, and how I planned with my dad so we could take over his property. He went on to tell the guests how I wanted to make him lose his job. I was very shocked because I never said any of that. I mean, have you guys ever been in a situation where lies are being told about you? Apparently, when I was being blackmailed by Charles and I ran to Monica to see whether she could lend me some money and had to tell her everything, she backstabbed me. She betrayed me and went behind my back to tell Josh lies. I finally understood why Josh had refused to listen to me. The lies were ridiculous and like something out of a movie, but Josh believed her. I finally understood why he was using every means to hurt me. Josh believed Monica because Monica is my best friend. The shocker is Monica was my maid of honor at our wedding. How could she betray me like this? Monica has always wanted a husband like mine. She never always told me that. I always suspected she had a crush on Josh, but I never knew she would stab me like this. I just thought her side remarks about my marriage were normal and that I had nothing to worry about. I'd always been so busy thinking of having a child that I stopped paying attention to details. I finally understood what Josh meant when he said he would take everything away from me. I have lost everything, my husband, my marriage, and now my best friend. I wanted to leave the party, but I was stopped by Josh's mom. She told me how she warned me six years ago to leave her son, but I refused. But she told me something I will forever be grateful for. She told me the reason Josh doesn't want kids. Can you guys guess the reason? It's because Josh was neglected as a child by his father. His father never treated him with love. His father always cursed him. Josh's father was a violent man, and he was a drunkard. It's surprising that a drunk was able to birth a child as good as Josh. It, Josh didn't want to have kids because he thought he'd start drinking like his father and blame his child for his faults. It hurts me that he refused to tell me something this deep before we got married. After listening to the reason Josh doesn't want kids, the hate I had for him vanished and felt pity for him. Instead of hating Josh, I was feeling sorry for him. Why didn't he tell me this? I would have held his hand till the very end. I guess the reason he didn't tell me was because he didn't want me to feel sorry for him. Well, I had to stop feeling sorry for him when I realized my ex-husband and ex-best friend got married. Yes, you read that right. Josh and Monica got married and the wedding was a lot. After the betrayal from Josh and Monica, I decided to forge my life with what was left. I managed to find a job at a retail store as a sales rep. The manager was kind enough to allow me to sleep in the store after work. Update. Hi guys, I'm back again. Life has been tough. I have been through a lot, but I'm grateful for the little progress. I'm beginning to pick up my life again. One piece at a time. Life was moving slowly but steady until I met Charles again. That was the beginning of another endless journey of blackmail. Apparently, he still had the naked pictures and videos of me on his phone. He vowed to post them online if I don't do as he says. Every day he will come by the retail store to ask me for more money. Slowly, I started losing everything I had managed to gather again. I was confused and lost. I was slowly becoming a shadow of myself again. Things got worse. 
I had to quit and stop working at the retail store because Charles was asking me to steal money from the store and give it to him so he can use it to gamble or else he will post my nude on all social media. I had to quit because the manager has been so nice to me and I don't want to hurt her by stealing from her. She took me in and trusted me at a time where everyone is guarded and protective of their space. I didn't want to break that trust. After her, I tendered my resignation letter to her. She asked me why I wanted to quit my job or if I have gotten any better offer. I refused to tell her, but she insisted I tell her or she won't accept my resignation. After so much thought, I decided to open up to her. I told her everything that I have been through. After telling her everything, she felt pity for me and advised me to report to the appropriate authorities. But Charles had warned me that the moment I involved the police, he would post my pictures on all social media. I decided to not inform the police because I can't bear to see my nude online. After my resignation, I decided to run away to my uncle's place in Clovelie, Devon, England. But before I could leave, I didn't know how Charles got to know I was trying to run away. My worst nightmare finally came to pass. Charles had uploaded my nude on all social media platforms and it was trending. Everyone in the town gossiped about me. I was the talk of the town. Everyone blamed me for leaving my husband and getting in bed with an ordinary housekeeper. No one cared to ask me the reason I did what I did. They all judged me and called me names. I felt that was the end and I didn't want to live again. I have lost everything because of a silly mistake I made. I wished I never listened to my father's advice. I wished I never even visited him on the fateful day. I lost everything the very day I got in bed with Charles. I wished I never hired him when he came crying a year ago that he needed a job. I took pity on him and gave him a job. Now he has become torn in my flesh. I finally left the town and went to stay with my dad and uncle in Clovelly. With the help of my uncle, I was able to secure a job as a teacher in a nearby school. Life was beginning to make sense again, and my relationship with my dad never got to how it was before, because I blamed him for ruining my life. I have forgiven him, but I can't seem to forget. The scar is forever fresh in my heart. Josh and Monica are still together. I hope Josh finds all the happiness I couldn't give him in Monica. As for Charles, I heard he was arrested and sent to jail. I've had a rough life, and I can't imagine that a single decision led to many consequences. I can't believe that I've gone from having it all to having nothing at all. My life became a bad movie, and I'm still trying to process everything. Well, I hope everyone learns from my story and doesn't make the kind of mistakes I made. Also, never let other people's opinion make your choices in life. Don't marry a person whose life doesn't follow yours. Know that it's not all advice you should take and definitely not from a man who has been divorced three times. Lol. Thanks and goodbye.